Hi guys, my name is Alicia and welcome to my channel. So today I am telling you my monthly wrap up and these are all the books that I read this month and my thoughts on them, my rating and all that fun stuff. So let's get into it. So this month I read 10 books. So I read two sci-fi fantasies, three romance, one horror, one nonfiction, one contemporary and two mystery and thrillers. So I feel like I read a good variety of different genres and although I don't think I had any five star reads, I definitely read um, some good books and some not so good books. Um, I also kind of read, I think, two of my most disappointing books of the year, which is really unfortunate. And honestly, compared to last month, I think I had like four five star books last month and this month having zero five star books so it was definitely not a great reading month but um let's get into what these books were and what i thought about them so first up i read the power by naomi alderman and i gave this book three stars i not that i had pretty high expectations for this book but i just based on the premise um i and based on the fact that I've read a book that apparently was kind of inspired by this book, I was kind of excited to read it and to see if I also enjoyed it. And although Three Stars isn't bad, I didn't really have a great time reading this book. Um, basically what this is about is it's following this society where women have suddenly gained this ability in their kind of genes or something um, where they can now electrocute people and so they kind of have these like superpowers and basically women and it's only with women um and so basically women around the world are taking over and pretty violently and not um using their power in a good way um, so they're really like subjugating men and oppressing men and kind of turning our current society on its head and basically what in our society men have the power to do and are capable of doing, now women are doing in terms of like power in um, politics, in relationships, in um, media, things like that. And so yeah, based on that premise, this just seems like a really interesting book and it definitely, it was a book that I think raised a lot of interesting points and created a lot of interesting discussions, I guess, but I just think in terms of the execution and what this book could have been, it didn't really live up to its potential. I do think um, this book took a very narrow approach to what the situation could have been like because all of the characters, all of the female characters, really only used their power in one way and that was to suppress or like oppress men and to do what men had kind of done to them. And I definitely think that in our world, I guess, I mean, not that I, I mean, we'll never actually know for sure, but I think in our world, you know, if something like this were to happen, not every woman would decide that they are, hate men so much that they're just going to do what men have done to them. And I, I do think that the, uh, what the author was trying to say, I think, is that, um, really what's important is equality you know it's not that men should be more powerful or that, or that women should be more powerful but that we should all be on an even playing field um but yeah I, I do think in the way that the book was written certain things just didn't come across well and then I just didn't necessarily love that the only focus was how women were now taking over the the world in a very violent way so I gave it three stars because I did like some of the conversations and some of the points that the book raised, but I didn't necessarily love the execution or all of the things that happened in this book. So next I read Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed, and this is a contemporary book, but honestly it felt more like a thriller, I guess. It was pretty intense and had a lot of drama and was just a really fast paced and fun book. This is basically following a young black woman who is a babysitter for the sort of rich upper class white family. And so one day her employer, the mother of the child she babysits, calls her up and tells her that there has sort of been this uh, incident at the house and she needs this babysitter to come and take the child away from the house for a little. So this girl comes, she takes the, the kid and her and her friend go to a local supermarket which is kind of high-end, maybe like Whole Foods type thing, and they go there and basically the security guard comes up to her and accuses her of kidnapping the child because obviously she is black and the child is white. And so that's kind of the starting point of the story and from there we kind of see how this event changes our main character's life and also how the 
employer, like the mother of the child that she works for, as well as during this event, um, there's this guy who was videotaping the whole thing. And so he is also a character in the book and kind of, so those are two white characters and how, uh, kind of like performative activism and how, um, being an ally to minorities and people of color, what that might look like. Um, and so yeah, that, that event is kind of the starting point of the book, but we're really just following these three characters as they go about their lives and kind of deal with the repercussions of that situation. So like I said, this was really fast paced, really fun, and I actually unexpectedly had a really good time reading this book. I don't think I had a lot of expectations or um, wasn't really expecting much with this book, but I, I did have a really fun time and I ended up giving it four stars. So yeah, it was probably one of my favorite books of the month. Then I read I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. So this is a really short uh, horror novel. It might even be like a novella or something. I think it was like less than 200 pages. And this was a very um, interesting read. I didn't love it. I gave it 2.5 stars, but um, I did love the atmosphere that was created and like the eeriness um, of what the book was. Basically, this is about uh, a woman who is thinking of ending things with her boyfriend. So she's thinking of breaking up with this guy, um, but she decides, I guess, to go on this last road trip with him to go and meet his parents. And on this road trip, she kind of like weird things start happening and it ends up getting creepier and creepier as you read along. And there were definitely moments of like true scariness and creepiness. And especially uh, listening to the audiobook, I definitely got a little freaked out at certain points, but I think overall the story, despite being very short, kind of dragged on in the beginning and was a little slow for me. And although I did like the sort of reveal and stuff that happened at the very end, I just think that because it was so slow and just dragged on too much for me, it just, the payoff wasn't necessarily enough. Um, so maybe 2.5, closer to three stars, but yeah, definitely not my fav favorite but it definitely had um, some good qualities in it. Then I read Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. And this is a sapphic romance where our main character is uh, kind of, doesn't have a really good relationship with her family, who is her stepmother and her stepsister. And she has moved away from home and hasn't really talked to her family for like five years. And as a photographer, she ends up being called by her step stepmother to come be the wedding photographer for her stepsister. And so when she comes back home, she ends up starting this sort of friendship and friends with benefits situation with her stepsister's best friend. And the romance is between the main character and the stepsister's best friend. And while there are definitely good things in this book, I did really like the sort of family dynamics and how the stepsister and the main character grew through the story. I didn't necessarily love the romance. I didn't really feel a lot of chemistry and Honestly, some parts were a little boring, so I ended up giving this three stars. Not my favorite romance, but by no means was it like a bad book. It just wasn't, um, by my standards, I guess, a really great romance. So then I read a nonfiction book called Dear Girls by Ali Wong. Ali Wong is a comedian and I didn't really know her work uh, before reading this book. I have seen her movie, I believe it's called Always Be My Maybe? Or always be my baby something like that um and i did really like that movie and i think she is a great comedian and actress um but really like this book and i enjoyed all of ali wong's points about um her life and her situation and honestly she talked a lot about working in the business that she works in and the struggles of it as well as being a mother and balancing kind of like work and life and you know wanting to succeed in her career but also wanting to be a good mother and she did it all with like such a humorous tone of voice and I mean you could really see her comedian side jumping out and I am really I was really impressed by like her writing style and just the things she had to say um I don't necessarily think she said a lot of new or like profound things but I did like um how she kind of spoke about all the things that she said so I don't really uh rate nonfiction books but if I were to rate this I would definitely give it maybe 3.5, four stars. Then I read one of my most anticipated releases of the year, and that was Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead by El Casamano. And I definitely really enjoyed this book. I don't think it was as good as the first book. It did have a bit of a, I guess, second book slump, 
but it was still a lot of fun and it had all of the fun elements and like humor and the friendship of our main character and Vero, like Finlay and Vero. Um, so it had all of the like great elements from the first book. I do think that this book got a little too um, plot heavy, I guess. There was a lot of like new characters and situations going on, but I definitely still loved the humor and I loved um, Vero and Finlay's relationship and friendship and then I also really enjoyed the like love triangle situation between Finlay and her two love interests and uh, I also really liked how basically throughout the book Finlay is writing her mystery book and so in that book when she's talking to like her editor and stuff she's always mentioning how the romance in her book should like play a part and then it's always reflective of her own romance so I kind of like the like I guess like the fourth wall breaking moments um so all in all this is definitely a very enjoyable read just not as great as the first book but still a really good book and I ended up giving it four stars so then I read The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern and this is a book that I, that I definitely thought I would be giving five stars to and I kind of had a lot of expectations for it I think just because it is pretty hyped up and pretty beloved but um unfortunately I really didn't like this book. I ended up giving it like two maybe 2.5 stars and I'm not sure if it's like me or if it's just the book but um it was just really slow and really like character focused and I usually see myself as a character driven reader. I really like reading about characters and delving into their backstories and their situations and like the relationships between characters and things like that but for some reason with this book I just don't think I really cared enough about the characters to really get into their stories and then with the plot I think it was such a cool and unique plot but I don't think it really delivered on the plot either so on both ends I feel like the story is kind of lacking for me and then also this was a bit of a love story I guess and I just never really understood the love story, I guess. I feel like there was never any um, real connection with the characters and I, yeah, just was never really, I guess, invested in the characters enough to care about the love story either. So all in all, I think, I mean, the only great thing about this book was the writing. I think you cannot deny that this book has some of the most lyrical and descriptive writing um, and, you know, Aaron Morgan is a beautiful writer, but I think at times the sort of flowery writing kind of took away from the characters and the plot for me and yeah I mean I'm just really disappointed in this book I really wanted to love it and unfortunately I don't so then I read two books basically in anticipation for uh this tv show and the tv show being Bridgerton and the two books being The Viscount Who Loved Me and An Offer From A Gentleman both of these books, uh, The Viscount Who Loved Me is basically the second book in the whole Bridgerton series and it is the book that the second season is based on and so I was really excited about this book because obviously in the show we have a South Asian main character who is the lead in the show and having like seeing, I hadn't seen the show before reading the book but knowing that like those were the actors I was definitely picturing them as I read the book and I for for me at least, I think that really added to my experience reading the book because I absolutely loved this book and I actually lied before I said I had no five stars but I did actually have one five star and that was this book. Um, I just think, I mean, this book it wasn't amazing, it wasn't written, like it wasn't the best written book, it wasn't the best romance I've ever read, nothing of the sort but I do think that just the, I guess like the whole, everything put together again like with the knowing that these are the actors playing these characters and then knowing their like chemistry and everything and then the way that the book was written um it just came all together for me and I really loved it so this was definitely five stars and definitely after watching the show and I mean that's on a separate note I think the show was amazing on its own but having read the book now I definitely think the show was lacking in some parts I think the they kind of like took away from the main love story and you know Kate and Anthony and their love story and especially all of the amazing moments in the book they kind of ignored them and like took away a lot of their backstory and a lot of the really cute moments um so I didn't love that but I did love how the show kind of added some you know character stuff for, for Edwina and um I guess all of the other plots kind of unnecessary and I think kind of did take away from Kate and Anthony's story but I do like some of the changes that were made so yeah basically this book amazing five stars absolutely loved it and then for an offer from a gentleman that is the third book in the Bridgerton series and 
assuming that the third season is based on this book, which I'm not sure if it will be, um, we can expect that, I guess. Uh, I definitely really like this book too, and I feel like I'm for sure invested in the series now and I want to finish reading the whole thing, but this third book was not my favorite. I think I gave it like 3.5, maybe 4 stars. It was still really fun and a really good time, and I'm very excited to see what the show does with the book, but um, uh, compared to the second book, which I absolutely loved, this one was not as amazing for me, but it was still really fun. It's basically a Cinderella retelling with Benedict, who is the second oldest brother in the Bridgerton family, and Sophie, who is the sort of Cinderella character, and yeah, I think it had a lot of great moments, and I think it was a little different because both of the first books were sort of marriage of convenience tropes and this one was more, I guess their conflict was external because Sophie is this servant and maid and so Benedict can't necessarily marry her. So it's more like their external issues and not like their internal problems and like fears and things like that. Um, but I did, I did really enjoy it still. I just I still just really love the second book so much more. And then lastly, I read Good Rich People by Eliza Jane Brazier, and unfortunately, this is probably one of my most disappointing books of the year, along with The Night Circus, um, only because this was one of my most anticipated books of the year. Um, I just really, first of all, love the cover, and I really like the premise. I think basically this is about uh, this really rich couple who are basically too rich for their own good, and they get super bored, so they decide to play this little game where they basically have a tenant living in their house and they play this game where they decide to ruin this tenant's life just for their personal amusement. And so that just sounds really fun and I feel like there were so many cool and fun places the book could have gone and it just went in, th in a direction that I personally did not have a great time with and I just think it made the book a little boring. So I, I really like the beginning of the book and I really like the, I guess, main character, um, Lila, who is the wife of the rich couple and I, I liked the tone and I liked the, I guess, I, the outlandishness of the book I think was really fun and I think made the book fun to read, but then I feel like it got a little too convoluted in the reveal and like the twist, I guess, and also the twist happened really early, so I feel like for most of the book I didn't care after, you know, what was going to happen, so yeah, unfortunately this one wasn't great. I think I'm gonna give it like two stars, maybe 2.5, but yeah, really, really not my favorite. And I feel like this one just could have, it had so much potential to be so good and it just wasn't, unfortunately. So those are all the books that I read this month, 10 books. It's not my best reading month, but um, you know, I feel like I read 10 books and I only really loved maybe two or three of them. So yeah, all in all, not a good reading month, but I'm hoping for better next month. And thanks for watching this video, guys. I will see you next time.